Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca automation playlist. And today I am going to talk about a Tosca best practices. Now we are going to go through a list of different best practices. Although there are several defined in the Tricentis support website, I'm going to take you through top 10 best practices during this series of videos. So we are going to start off with the first best practice in this particular video, and then we'll continue doing many more uh, in the coming up videos. So before we start, I would recommend you to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on the next video. Now coming to the Tosca best practice number one, and it is about naming conventions. Now this could be useful if you are working on a real project or if you are preparing for your interviews or even if you are just practicing with Tracentis Tosca for your test automation. Naming conventions are very important whenever you are working with any automation project, no matter which tool do you use, okay? You have to follow some naming conventions and this practice is also followed in uh, development, in testing or in any other field, okay? So it is very important to have proper naming conventions and then it is also followed across the team, not just by you, okay? So proper and consistent naming conventions should be used for module, test case, or test step names in Tracentis Tosca, okay? So what will happen if you don't follow these naming conventions? So what will happen if we don't follow this best practice? Well, uh, in the coming up time, once you start uh, building your automation, you will realize that it will become difficult to maintain your automation project if you don't follow naming conventions. Also, if you are working in a team and uh, if everybody is following their own naming conventions for different uh, objects like modules, test cases, or test step names, then someone joining new to the team will never be able to recognize what this actual module does. And then there will be duplicate modules or test cases created even though they exist in the project. So the whole purpose of uh, the framework will fail because then uh, there will be duplications, there will be higher maintenance, there will be less reusability, and uh, also uh, the project won't be readable and won't be easy to use for a newcomer, right? So there are a lot of disadvantages and there are lots of advantages if you follow the best practice, okay? So let's see with a real-time example how um, it looks when you don't follow the naming conventions and how the project will look if you follow the naming conventions, okay? So I'm back uh, in my Tosca project and here I've opened basically two objects or you can say two test cases, okay? In the first screen, uh, you can see uh, this is the test case which I have built using naming conventions on the left-hand side. And on the right hand side, you will see uh, this is a recorded module, okay? Also, uh, test case is also automatically created. Now this process will remain same uh, when you scan your modules and create your test cases directly without renaming anything. These are the default names which Tosca will pick up, okay? And how it decides all these names, it decides on uh, the screen or the functionality of the application. It will just pick up that name and uh, name your test case or module accordingly okay now um, if you look through uh, on the left hand side okay you will see there is a proper order of uh, test steps which are mentioned for each test case okay then there are folders also which basically group this test steps okay and you will see that they are named properly okay so looking at this uh, structure right or test case I can easily follow what's going on in this test case okay so in the pre-processing I open a URL in the processing I first do a register user I click on register um, I buffer the email first name last name I go to the register page and then um, I complete the registration right also I log out the user I then log in the user okay and then I add products to cart. I click on different elements. I uh, do shopping. I click on the shopping cart. I do a checkout. 
and you can see uh, for checkout there are different pages and th that's why we have given this uh, uh, separator here right so this is for billing address this is for shipping address this is for shipping method right so you can make these steps even more descriptive right you can write um, billing address checkout you can write uh, your buffering order details right so like you're clicking on pdf invoice so there are all detailed step names right and then uh, inside this it will have the module attributes or the values or verifications whatever we are putting on right so this is a proper naming convention right so i'm following a proper naming convention for folders for test steps right and then when there are common test steps like checkout across different pages i am also giving it uh, with a separator or i am describing the test step right what action i am performing here right so it could be a click it could be a verify it could be a buffer right accordingly i have renamed all the step okay so when we come to the uh, right part of it where we haven't followed any naming conventions we just put together a test case um, as it was provided by tosca okay and by default tosca will name some of the test steps uh, based on how it is able to scan them like open url okay so it has named it properly you can still use this but what about the other ones like this one is demo web shop uh, this one is again demo web shop okay uh, maybe demo web shop login and books is still okay okay but still not you don't know what it is doing and similarly for uh, you can see here checkout okay demo web shop checkout there are three demo web shop checkout right so it's really difficult to make out uh, for a newcomer or even some other teammate who has not worked on this right he will not be able to make out what this test case is first of all doing okay what is the test case flow and which test steps are being used here okay even looking at the modules it's very difficult to make out which module should be used for um, checking out your shipping address or your billing address or shipping method right so it's very very difficult and when you look here it's uh, pretty easy to understand it is reusable because people will then understand what uh, module what this particular module is doing right so if i even jump to the module you will see the module name is properly named right so check out billing address but here uh, there is nothing right so for this it is demo web shot checkout i don't know whether it is for billing address or whether it is for payment details or anything else okay so this is a brief idea about how naming conventions can affect uh, your project your uh, framework and your overall structure right so it affects a lot of things and that is why um, this is the first best practice recommendation which i will provide to you no matter if you're practicing but it is very important uh, even when you are working in a project or this could be one of the questions of uh, if you are interviewing for a tosca automation position so do keep in mind about this best practice and do follow a certain naming convention throughout your project okay so that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new today we would love to hear your comments so please uh, leave a comment uh, on the bottom of this video and until the next video keep watching and keep learning